First, let's introduce the basic principles of demand and supply. They will help us understand better the concept of elasticity, which we will need a bit later on. Demand and supply examine how the interactions between buyers and sellers determine the price and quantity of a product. Basically, the world of economics consists of two types of players, so to say. On one side, we have consumers who buy goods, and on the other, firms that sell goods. Consumers want to maximize their utility with respect to the goods they purchase, whereas companies always try to make as much profit as possible from the products or services they sell. And the law of demand you're probably already familiar with? It states that when prices rise, consumers are willing to buy less and vice versa. When prices drop, they tend to buy more. All the factors influencing consumers' decision to buy are captured in the following demand function. This is a function driven by variables like price, income, and the price of other goods. However, in order to study the effects on demand, we should look at one variable at a time only and keep the others fixed. There are also more complex variables that can influence the demand for a product, like what part of one's income is spent on this good or the time passed since a price change has been introduced. We don't take these into consideration here, but please bear in mind that they are also factors that can influence demand. Let's look at an example now. Consider the demand for cars in a small town. It can be described in the following way. The demand for cars is dependent on the price of cars, P of X, buyer's income, and the price of motorcycles, P of Y. Given that the average income is 100, the price of motorcycles is 40, and in a context where all variables are fixed apart from price and quantity, the demand function looks like this. Q of X equals 14 minus 0.4 P of X. If we pay a bit more attention to the function, we can see that the higher the price is, the lower the quantity. Next, let's rearrange the equation so that it shows P of X in terms of Q of X. Here is how it works. 0.4 P of X equals 14 minus Q of X. Hence, P of X equals 14 minus Q of X divided by 0.4. Hence, the inverse demand function P of X equals 35 minus 2.5 Q of X. This equation allows us to obtain the price in terms of quantity. Furthermore, if we draw the graph of this function, it will give us the demand curve. The demand curve simply shows us the inverse relationship between quantity and price. For any given price, PO, we can determine the quantity being demanded, QO. As we move along the curve, the price lowers and the quantity increases. Please pay attention here. Movements in price shift us along the demand curve. However, there are other factors which cause shifts in the curve itself. Any changes in the overall income levels in the economy and the price of substitutes or complementary products, for example, would cause the whole demand curve to shift upwards or downwards. In other words, the change of endogenous factors, such as price and quantity, cause a shift along the demand curve, while exogenous factors shift the demand curve itself. By the way, the same is valid for supply curves as well. The supply curve gives us the relationship between price and quantity supplied by firms. The higher the price, the higher the potential quantity that companies are willing to sell to customers, which in turn brings them higher revenue. So an increase in price leads to an increase in quantity supplied or an upward movement along the supply curve. Similarly, to demand analysis, the price is an endogenous factor. However, the factors exogenous to supply are slightly different. They are related to the cost of production, such as labor or raw material prices. Any change in these factors would cause the supply curve to shift itself up or down. Great. We will continue with the supply side analysis a bit later on. For now, we just have to remember that a change in supply and a change in quantity supplied mean completely different things. What's next? Once we have the demand and supply curves, we are in a position to determine the point of equilibrium. When the demand curve intersects the supply curve, we have a stable situation in which the quantity supplied equals demand. Such price is equally good for buyers and sellers. What are the mechanisms that push markets towards such equilibrium point? In simple words, the law of demand and the law of supply combined determine the level of equilibrium. 
Any change in the equilibrium price will result in quantities that are different from the ones observed in equilibrium. For example, if the price drops, the quantity demanded will be more than the quantity supplied. There will be a shortage of goods or excess demand on the market. The relatively higher demand for goods will cause prices to go up until they reach an equilibrium level. In the opposite situation, when prices increase above the equilibrium point, there will be an excess supply of goods and services. Market forces will then push prices down, reaching their original level. So, once reached, the equilibrium quantity and price are presumed to stay stable in the long run. Markets are theoretically operating at this point, as it equalizes the benefits for buyers and sellers. But how do we numerically find equilibrium levels? Let's illustrate this quickly through an example. If we have a simple demand function, QD equals 140 minus 4P, and a supply function, QS equals minus 130 plus 5P, we know that in equilibrium, the quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So we need to solve the following equation. From there, we get that the equilibrium price equals 30, and the corresponding equilibrium quantity is 20. These are the very basics of demand and supply analysis. All right, moving to another important concept now. We need to know that every demand and supply function has a slope. Let's get back to the demand function we introduced earlier. Its steepness, or slope, represents how much one of the variables needs to change for the other one to change too. It equals the absolute change in price over the absolute change in quantity. In our example, it is equal to minus 2.5. This is the coefficient in front of quantity in the inverse demand function. P of x equals 35 minus 2.5 times Q of x. That means that the price needs to decrease by 2.5 so that the quantity of cars demanded grows by one unit or one vehicle. The slope of the demand curve, delta P divided by delta Q, gives us a good indicator of how price and quantity are related to each other in measurement units. If the price is $2.5 lower, that will increase the demand by one unit. However, what if the price was 3.5% less? How would that affect the quantity demanded? To answer this question, we will study elasticity. It comes up next. Thanks for watching.